so this is a long quote on page five, basically the, the full paragraph in the middle there. Uh, we don't. Uh, we don't. I have to read all of this, but I'm just going to read it to set this stuff in terms of what we're. I think he really lays down his. What he's arguing against, if he's arguing against this. So a further goal here is to combat what I take to be an unnecessary presumption of much lyric theory and pedagogy, that the goal of reading a lyric is to produce a new interpretation. This is a recent development in the history of poetry. In prior centuries, readers expected poems to teach and delight. Students were not asked to work out the sort of interpretations now deemed proof of serious study. They might parse, imitate, translate, memorize, evaluate, or identify allusions and rhetorical or prosodic strategies. But interpretation in the modern sense was not part of literary engagement until the 20th century, and writers and readers may not have been greatly the worse for it. They could acquire knowledge of the tradition and develop considerable expertise and power of discrimination without assuming that the goal of engagement with poetry was producing interpretations. In some, readers appreciated poems much as we do songs. We listen to songs without assuming that we should develop interpretations. We take them to illuminate the world, and we sing them to others or to ourselves, point out what we like about them compare them to other songs by the same and different artists, and generally develop considerable connoisseurship about songs without engaging in interpretation. We might do well to ponder the fact that time has brought no falling off in love, song, in, in love of song, while the presumption that poems exist to be interpreted has accompanied a diminution of interest in the lyric. So that's a long quote, but I think he's essentially making that argument that... <clears throat> Because we emphasize interpretation, and specifically novel-like interpretation, narrative-like interpretation, we emphasize that, he's arguing, uh, that we lose what the lyric is actually trying to do. So the thing I struggled with here is what is the distinction between, I guess, does he mean producing new interpretations or does he uh, just any interpretation? Well, that's a good question. I'm not sure. I think, I mean, means... I think he means new just because that's how he starts this paragraph. Uh, there's this goal of reading to produce new interpretation, but then he presents this, you know, uh, students were not asked to work out the sort of interpretations now deemed proof of serious study. They might parse, imitate, translate, memorize, evaluate, or identify allusions and rhetorical or prosodic strategies. But interpretation here is something else. Like, all of those things to me are aspects of I guess maybe we should distinguish here interpretation from fostering understanding. Yeah, it's, it gets confusing here, and I kept, I was texting Sophie about this, a lot of what he's saying struck me as a distinction without a difference a lot of these times, uh, because it is like splitting hairs over this, so for when I was first reading this, and I had to reread a bunch of this stuff, well, he said, you know, the presumption that poems exist to be interpreted has accompanied a diminution of interest in the lyrics. So he's saying the fact that we're putting this novel-like um, purpose onto lyric poems, i.e. to instruct and delight or something, right? Uh, or just to give us That's a narrative. That's all Sir Philip Sidney. Yeah, or just to give us a narrative or some type of uh, character arc, like in an epic or something. Uh he's claiming that that has led to the lack of interest in lyric poetry. So he's, it's quite a mouthful. Like this is a long paragraph. You guys heard me read this out. It's long, it's convoluted. Again, he's using words that, you know, take some thinking about when you, when you have to read it like this. Uh, but then at the end of it, we're kind of like, oh, he's making quite a, a large claim here. And he does grant that even that, like, it's still a form of interpretation. So he goes on to kind of keep explaining this song thing, which is what I think is one of his strongest points. But uh, still, it just kind of falls short for me, like, just not enough in there. 
Well, and it also makes me wonder if this is a response to something happening in, like, a new wave of the academic community. I mean, it uh, is. More yeah. than, well, yeah, but <laughs> more than he's just talking about, you know, the average teacher of literature. Yeah. Or the average student of literature. I think maybe the he's identifying this as a trend in academia, like among, um, you know, other people who write texts like this. Yeah. I think it's definitely a risk. I mean, it's not like naming anything in particular, although he does go into different forms here in the later chapters. Why you have to wonder. I mean, I think he's pretty clearly like trying to take a stand. And I, and I think that's why he hedges so much is because to take a stand like this against, the current pedagogy and teaching poems. Uh, yeah, of course he's going to get a lot of shit. Although, I mean, what he's tenured, he's protected. I don't know why he's... Well, and I think it, there but... is very much right now an emphasis on, like, the situation of the speaker, which I'm sure we will get to. Right, but, that, and uh, he does make, like, the kind of... 